with uh, story time. I'm going live on my live feed. I'm recording for YouTube at the same time. I'm going to tell a story that I fucking love telling. And turn off the comments on this live feed. And I'm going to tell y'all a motherfucking story. The animals are stoked. I'm stoked. Everybody's stoked, yo. Yo. When I was about 24 years old, I lived in Denver, Colorado. I didn't have a whole lot going for me. I had this cycle thing where I just meet a chick and move with her some crazy place and do some dumb shit. End up hating her, hating myself for liking her, and then going and doing a bunch of ridiculous stuff. This cycle has followed me around for fucking ages. So I get to Denver with this chick, Liz Romanowski. Oh, Liz Romanowski. She was so pretty. She wasn't the brightest bulb in the box. <clears throat> so we moved out there. Yo, we didn't know where we were going. I like to just leave and go. I don't want to think about it. I just want to do it. It's more fun that way. Right? You never know what you're going to get. Then you're truly enjoying a box of chocolates. So I get there, we're staying in a hotel. Long story short, me and her ended up getting in fights all the time. It was crazy. She flew back home. And I proceeded to develop an enchanting methamphetamine addiction. <laughs> But I was also doing shrooms and microdosing. I, yo, I was doing some crazy shit. Yo, I worked at a fucking gay bar. I was a bar back at a gay bar. I mean, it's good. Like, I'm cute. Like, but I was a fucking pincushion there. I didn't like that. Ain't nobody got time for that. So, I had like a shit mediocre life. I wasn't really working for myself. I was a cook somewhere. I did bar backing. I wasn't really doing anything good. And I was doing a lot of drugs. So, I was going for like five days straight once. I mean, I was so fucked up. I was doing meth, heroin, and towards the end of it, I started drinking GHB to make me fall the fuck asleep because I was just twisted. I had no idea what was going on. So my boy comes by and drops off like an ounce of mushrooms, and I'm like, all right, this will put me to sleep. Who the fuck does that? Who thinks, oh, yeah, I'm on meth. You know what a really good idea is? Just let me eat this you know, half ounce of mushrooms out of this ounce bag my boy just gave me. So I'm like, twiggity twack. I call my mom up. And I'm crying to her, and I'm like looking in the closet. There's this fucking gorilla that's in my closet. The gorilla's been in my closet, I don't know, hours at this point. I'm freaking out. My mom tells me to go to bed. The next day, the gorilla be gone. I didn't go to bed, but I kind of like drifted out from the GHB. I woke up, and the mushrooms were still going mad hard, right? I'm still twack. The gorilla is still in my closet. I call my mom up crying. Mom, you gotta help me out here. This fucking gorilla's here. It's not letting me live in my house. It's living in my closet. It's taking up all the space in there. You gotta help me out, mom. Now my mom probably knew that I was on drugs. You don't really raise me without knowing when I'm all fucked up. Because when I'm not all fucked up, I'm brilliant, compassionate, eager to learn, loving, enthusiastic. When I'm fucked up, oh boy. What you know about them things, boy? Me know when you're fucked up, you a cunt. <laughs> and that's a fact. So she knew. But I was like goofy fucked up because the shrooms kind of outweighed the fucking meth at that point. So yeah. So that happened. So my mom says, listen, Adam, I've got a solution, okay? I'll order you from Fresh Direct 200 bananas. And I'm like, well, what the fuck am I going to do with the bananas, Ma? And she's like, I don't have another solution. You know, she was in New York City. No, she was in a, our house in Montauk. Um, so she's all the way in Long Island, right? And she can't get to Denver to help me out of this. I don't know what the fuck she'd do if she came anyway. So she sends me 200 bananas. By the time I get them, it's about 9 o'clock, okay? I put the bananas in the closet with the gorilla. I say closet. It was like, this was like one room with a border for a, like a wall and then a bed. And then like, this was a closet, but it was really just like a space to go to the bathroom. 
It wasn't really the most luxurious place. 1250 Logan Street, Denver. Fuck. Um, so after I gave the bananas to the gorilla, I went to my couch and I started playing video games. I was playing... Not Halo, the other one where you... Uh, I can't remember the fucking name. Man, was it fun. I used to get so high on shrooms that I'd just sit there stuck in the game. Like, I would be trying to spin around in the grass, but I'd be, like, in the grass, man. It's fucked up. Couldn't get out. Spent three hours of my life like that every trip for, like, a year. The next morning, I wake up and there's no bananas. Let me repeat that. The next morning, I wake up and there's no bananas. Oh, there's banana peels. There's a receipt for the bananas in bags in the kitchen. 200 bananas. But there's no fucking bananas in the peels. There were when I went to bed, but they're not when I looked at it again. The gorilla was gone, and there were no fucking bananas. I called my mom. Mom, the gorilla's gone, the bananas are gone. She said, well, Adam, that's why I got you the bananas. And I was like, why, Mom? And she's like, because if you feed the gorilla, he'll go away. And I was thinking about it. Do I create my own reality? Is it Because I couldn't have possibly eaten those bananas. There's no fucking way I could eat 200 bananas. It's not possible. How on earth were the peels there but the banana meat missing? It wasn't in the toilet. I did not eat it. You know, you'd know if you ate 200 bananas. You'd be shitting your brains out. My point is, nobody will ever know if this story is true. And I'll never really know if that gorilla ate the fucking bananas. But because of all these experiences I've had on drugs, my brain opened up to something that was bigger. I mean, I really don't know what happened to the bananas. I can't imagine that the fucking gorilla ate them and disappeared. I can't imagine that there's really a gorilla in my closet first, so how the fuck would he get in my closet? It doesn't even make sense to me now, but to me then it made perfect sense. Gorilla in my closet, gotta feed a banana so it gets the fuck out of my closet, I can hang my clothes up. Or hang myself, because at that point life sucks. Gorilla living in my closet, who ate the fucking bananas? That's what I really want to know. I want to know who ate the fucking bananas and left the peels, right? Didn't even throw the peels out the window, you know, because I was a tweaker, so the, the windows, I had the screens like all off inside the place so I could like hang my head out. Like, what's going on, guys? <laughs> What's the bananas? <laughs> oh man, life. Ah, so thanks for tuning in to my little story about the gorilla that ate my fucking bananas and realities that are alternates that are probably concurrently existing at this point in this space now. See you guys next time. You can find me on Third Eye Opener on Instagram, www.thirdeyeopener.etsy.com for my Etsy shop, and www.thirdeyeroots.com for my store. Peace and love, y'all, from my side of the world to yours. Over and out.